So for guys who are rail fans, you know, rail buffs, whatever you want to call them, that want to become a railroader and want to work for the railroads, the biggest piece of advice I can give you, come in with your mind as a blank slate. We've, I've seen, I don't have that much time out here, we've seen guys come in here who think they know it all or don't want to be told anything. You will fail. And, now, and there's two reasons. One, because if you think you're the best at something already, you have no room to improve in your mind. You're never going to absorb that knowledge. Number two, these guys out here, they have 20, 30 years out here, they will chew you up and spit you out. And when you do fail, they're not going to want to help you. You know, be humble. You know, soak up as much of that knowledge as you can. And I don't, in my opinion, I don't care how long you've been doing something. You can always learn something. You can always better yourself at whatever you do. Hey, welcome to another interview of Railroader. Time is 2 09 in the morning. You know, still waiting for our train to show up here. So I was talking to Conductor Mark, that's my conductor today, and asked him some questions about the railroad. So always safety first going into the building. Well, today we got my man Mark here on another train together. I heard with Richie. It's just like in uh, Winslow. Our tax get a cab crash. It's unreal. Unreal. You saw him before on our Dash 9 video, which did very well. Thank you for everybody for watching that video. Now, uh, Mark, how are you doing today, Darren? Well, we're doing better if we had our train with us. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, mind, what time is it, man? What time is it? It is 2.13. At 2.13 in the morning, we just uh, hanging out and having a good con having a conversation here. So, um, how long have you been for at the railroad, Mark? I hired in 2014, marked up in 2015. So, I got about six, seven years out here altogether. Mm. So, what made you want to work for the railroad? So, I've loved trains ever since I was a little kid. You know, it's always been my fascination, always been my passion. And when I got out of high school, I just threw an application out. And actually, at first, they denied me. They said that I was a good candidate, but the position got filled. So, I started working at some other places. And then, I think three months later, they called me and they said, you still want the job? I said, hell yeah. So I'll definitely still take that job. And then here I am. Next thing I know, I'm going to Georgia, and that was an interesting. Went to Georgia. Remember that old Crown Vic I had? Mm -hmm. Drove all the way to Georgia and back on seven cylinders. <laughs> Eight cylinder was a fire. It was a fire. That was my first big railroad adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so doing that at McDonough, how was that experience for you? That was wild because that was the first time, you know, just out of high school. That was the first time I had ever driven like that far by myself in that old raggedy car mm -hmm. and it was it was neat driving through the different states and when you get down there to mcdonough because when you go to school go to conductor school it's not like you're with everyone in your division it's a mix so you get like all these different cultures all these different ways of life and i did find that pretty interesting okay. do you remember like your um do you have a, a bad experience going well, in the school at that time like so you didn't grasp at, at first that took you a while to grasp so the only bad experience I'd say I had when they were doing the hand signal test, when we were actually doing it with the remote engine, when I, I took him up, you know, told him to reduce stop, and then when I told him to come back, as I'm telling him to come back, you know how the remotes are, he slows it down, go reduce, then you tell him to stop. When he stops, he went, Phew, and I lost my grip, and I grabbed back onto the side of the car, at first, I was like, man, I just embarrassed myself. I thought I was going to start laughing. The instructor actually freaked out. He's like, dude, I'm sorry. I slammed it in the stop. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but that was probably my only bad experience. It was actually wasn't that bad down there at the school. Okay. Now, after you've done the school and everything, and you drive back, uh, when you get to the on, was it on job training, how was that for you? I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> he was what? I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> Why are you just nervous for? So, you know, 18, 18, 19 years old, this young kid, you know, my first big full-time job was here. It was just, it's a lot to take in at first. A lot of information, a lot, you know, you want to try and make a good first impression with people. And back then, we still had some old heads. 
some Reading guys that were still here, and they were not easy on you. They were tough on you. So, big shoes to fill. But, you know, eventually it just got easier. You know? You start doing things like riding a bike, just the repetition. Just things got a lot easier. But at first, I was nervous. Now, going to your time to your uh, your rubber career so far, now, um, have you ever had the experience of being furloughed? Yes, multiple times. And how many times had you been furloughed? Twice. And they had to wait for the 86. Um, Alright, we're going we're gonna, uh, we're gonna to head out soon. We're not about to head out anyway. No, the train hasn't even left yet. Oh, it didn't left you. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't leave you. I'm my bad. That's what I'm saying. It's leaving now. It's leaving so now. I got it like two hours before it gets up. Yeah. Well, oh shit. Yeah, you're right. I mean, don't quote me on it because I'm not looking at it right now. But yeah. That's what I would guess. You guess? But they have the party at Eddie Snow? From what I heard, A6 is clear of Eddie Snow. Okay. So they're waiting to get it stony free. So that means that they're working over there. So I don't know what part of they're working or they're leaving or what process they are in that. But the way they sound was they should be leaving shortly and coming up this that's my best guess for you. Can't get any better than that. It works. So probably about an hour, two hours. It's probably what it'll take them to get up here. Uh, that's that's railroad time, man. I got railroad time. Well, it's a railroad 15 minutes, which equals two hours. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's like a New York minute, right? It's really, you know, it's about that time. So, anyway, we're, we're, we're supposed to be. Uh, what were you we talking about? Um, oh, first coming back from Georgia. Yeah, you first coming back from Georgia. Now, you, you said a lot of Redding guys here back in the day. Um, now, did it have a? They leave? Did they leave a impression on you? Um, that that is long lasting. You know, some some things that some guys Definitely. did that uh, you liked that you didn't like. So, like but, Glenn McKinsky, mm-hmm. like he taught me how to work the yard. That's the first job I was on was the HMO one. And I, it's a shame that guys won't get the experience with those older guys. You know, because I mean, we got some good guys here. Some guys are really good at shipping. But there's no one that'll be able to throw them cars around my yard like the old Reading crews and the old Conroe crews. It's just that talent is just dying out, you know. So any new guys that come, it's, just, it's a shame that they won't get that experience. Like when I do go to engineer school, I wish I could get the Owens to train me. Oh, yeah. Because that dude yeah. was a hell of an engineer. Right. So, he went back to Conroe. Yeah, true. So. Yeah, true. Okay. Now, um, everybody go through some situation here at the rubber, right? Are you able to tell me how many situations you've been as far as, um, you know, bad experiences you had? Hmm. What do I want to share? <laughs> <laughs> well, get my... We'll get the only time I pulled a no-no, I did something bad. And that was, I think it was, I had less than a year marked up. And we were down working West Falls, it was when the K-38 worked daily. And we had to, we were swinging some tracks around, we were just getting ready to go to the west end of the yard, double up and come back. But they had a 64T coming, and they said, hey, we need you to swing this one track over to the other. And I'm looking at the track, check this, nah, this track's good for 20 cars, I'm only swinging five over, I should be fine. Shove the cars in, my dumb ass doesn't watch a shove, Go to the other end and said, huh, those cars are out in the lead in front of me. I just ran through that switch. So that was like my, oh my God, I'm such an idiot. Why didn't I watch a shove? And I, that moment sticks in my mind. You know, I'm always so cautious about where I'm shoving and stuff like that. The worst part about that situation was the cars are added to that track. We put them back where we found them. We never needed to move them. So, <laughs> but that's how it happened. You know what? Um, that happens uh, quite often because, um, you know, it happened to me when I was on a remote job shoving those up. It was uh, 14 cars magically appeared from out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Figure that one out, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> now, let's talk about the, the good times. Right, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, any other any other situations you've been instead of that one time? I don't know if I'd say any, there was any times where I was like, oh, my God, I just want to, I hate this job. What did I do that? Like, I mean, you get some days where it's out there pouring down rain. You got a rain jacket on, you're still soaked. But I think that just comes with the job, you know? I mean, there's a couple times I've been out here where it's like a guy I'm working with, like, I just want to strangle him. Mm. But nothing to where I'm really like, 
I want to quit. I hate this. I will say this, the times, and we did talk about that a little bit when I was furloughed. So the first time I got furloughed, I had nowhere to go. So I just took the furlough. And then it was actually Bill Gillespie was the one who told me. Because Brian Pierce was back on the list. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. I said, I'm older than him. So he actually got me back in the first time. The second time I got cut from Abrams, I went to Allentown. And I always tell guys, appreciate what you have in Abrams. Because those guys in Allentown, they work. And that was probably the only other time where it was like, do I still want to do this? And that was like at the height of PSR when it was cut jobs, cut jobs. you got to get this done. If you go over 10 hours, you know, we're going to have a problem. So, but other than that, nothing really terrible. Nothing that really made me like say, F this, I want to quit, you know. Now, does it take one time to get wet or very cold that you won't do that no more as far as uh, being prepared for the elements? By when I was a CT, we went down to Carney's Point and I didn't have my rain gear. Surely enough, after that, I had my rain gear every time because I got poured on while walking that 120 car train. <laughs> it only takes one time where you're completely soaked and then have to go for a 12 hour train ride. You're like, I'm not going to do this again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Be like, why did I do that? No, I just didn't know that's going to happen. People don't realize, too, like the snow. Like, if you got a lot of snow out there, it feels like you're walking double, triple the distance. They make you wear these big boots. Boot covers, that can be tough, but you know, just take your time. Nothing's a rush out here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, that's just, I guess it's safe to say, uh, hurry up and wait. Yes, hurry up and wait. Too mm. much fun around here. Too much fun around here. <laughs> now, um, Abrams. Now, it, it could be a, a great place and also a toxic place. Depends on uh, certain, you know, certain elements. Now, um, what Abrams is good for is nicknames, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I know where you're going with this. So, what is your nickname and how did you get yours? So, I have two nicknames. Mm -hmm. The first nickname is Baby Bucci. And the guy that I get that nickname from is Chris Sambucci. I've only met him a couple times. But supposedly people say that I have a nickname Baby Bucci because I look like him and I work a lot like him. Which I've never seen the guy work, but supposedly he was good at his job. So, I guess that's a good reason. The reason I got the nickname Todd, which is the other nickname, was we, when I ran through the switch at 5X, I was with Kevin Carr and Dan Bogan, and they were like, you know what? You're not worthy of the nickname Bucci anymore. And they said, <laughs> they said we got to think of another name, and Kevin goes, you know what? You look like a Todd to me. <laughs> so, your new nickname is Todd. Uh-huh. So, so, half the guys call me Todd, half the guys call me Baby Bucci. Oh, wow. You talk about the bad times. What about the good times? I've had so many good times out here. Talk to me about lots it. Lots and lots of good times. Uh, there was one time going down to Winslow. And it's always funny because I think everyone agrees, like, the best times you have is when stuff is going wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, one of the good times we had, Lance and I were going down to Winslow to get a 63X. And our Jitney's transmission went. <laughs> and we were just sitting on that curbside, hanging out, listening to music, having a good time. Like, he's going to watch his video. He's going to be like, yeah, I remember that. He's freaking rednecks pulled up to us, like, saying, oh, oh you, you folks need some help there? It's funny. <laughs> Over there in Jersey? Over there in the middle of nowhere, Bumble, New Jersey. Oh, wow. You know? <laughs> That's funny. Mm. Now, outside of railroading, like, um, I hear that you are a very talented um, programmer. Is that true? I wouldn't say super talented. I know how to do basic stuff. So I know basic code and, you know, I do this stuff with Run 8 and I create sound enhancements for that and stuff like that. Which is line. Double check. Highball. guys we've made packs where we do paint enhancements and sounds so but i wouldn't say i'm a, definitely not a master there are guys way better than me than that at that kind of stuff now explain to me what's run eight so run eight is it's a train simulator for the pc computer and it's a multiplayer train simulator that's the big thing behind it and i am a staff member on a server called the depot 
pretty much it's an open world server. Our server runs 24-7 and we simulate pretty much real railroad operation. So we have a car tracking system, uh, we have an MW team, you know, there's locals, road trains, passenger trains, hump yards. So it's pretty much anything that you can do out here, you can do in that sim. And, you know, my job as a staff member is to, you know, make sure that the users, they're everything they need to get done. So as far as, you know, make sure that everything on the server is correct, you know, make sure people, sure people doing what they're supposed to do. That's what that is. And there's three different regions on run eight. You have the California region, which goes from Los Angeles all the way out to Arizona. That's one route. You have the Southeast, which goes from Orlando, Florida, all the way up to Waycross, Georgia. And then the Northeast, which is Selkirk, New York to, I think, not Rotterdam, Syracuse. Syracuse, New, New York, which is in Duet. Uh, J to the Y299, the uh, 5270 over. Y299 over. Hey, good evening there, Mr. Boyd. I heard you got the rescue engine for old 98 over. That is correct, over. Okay, following T179, you'll duck in right behind yeah, him and deciding you've gone for now. There's our Del Monte car. Roger, following right behind T179, ducking in behind him. That's Roger, thank you, JL. Uh, that sounds uh, very interesting. Um, if somebody wants to uh, join that um, server or that club, how would they go about doing that? So we have two different memberships in the depot. It's all, it's all free when I say memberships. It doesn't cost you anything except for you have to buy the game. But there's two different ways to get in. Um, you can do a public membership, which is where we have a public server. There really isn't any guidance. It's just you come in, run whatever train you want, and you get off the server. Then we have the depot plus. The depot plus is, that's where the realistic operation is. That's where we have our, we call it our operation center, which is all the car forwarding data is kept. That you have to apply for, and then you get accepted oh. after you take the Yo. test. You see, it's, it's a test to even, it says a test, right? Just like a basic thing. Like you get asked them, when you apply, you get asked like basic questions. Basic questions about the sim and basic knowledge. And then you have to go through a check ride, which is we'll, we'll give you a train to take over the mountain. We'll watch you take it. And even if you're not a you know super proficient at it, if you can get the basics down, then we'll help you with the rest. You know, we don't expect everyone to be perfect. But if you're someone who is willing to learn once to get better, then we'll help you get into the more detailed stuff. Mm. Well, that sounds pretty, uh, pretty cool. Um, I'll be sure to leave that uh, information down in, in the description below. What scale do you, uh, do you model? N scale. And uh, what, what type of uh, rural or era do you do? I do, let's say, all era NS. I really haven't touched that stuff in a long time, and I should. Especially with seeing all the stuff that you do with your layout. I really should build a layout in my house. But I used to belong to, a lot of guys who watch the channel, you might even know the club, New Jersey Southern. Right. I used to belong to. And I, I guess technically still do, but with me living out here and working for the railroad, I don't have as much time to go out and travel with those guys like I used to and go to all the different events that I used to go to. Yeah, Bill X watch you a lot too. Yeah. Now. Shout, Bill, if you're watching this, shout out to you, man. Um, I know your wife just passed away. I hope you're doing well, buddy. So. Yeah. That's how you get to applause. Now, we talk about you run eight, you model railroading. Now, let's just go back a little bit. Now, if somebody comes to you and say, hey, uh, Todd, or Baby Booch, <laughs> Mark, how do I get on the railroad and what should I do? What, what is your advice to that person? Honest answer or a nice answer? Um, I, I, I want an honest answer because I know that we're like our location is not hiring, but other locations are. But if somebody watching, you know, um, you know, over, throughout the world or, you know, throughout the country and they want to um, do it and they, they like it, I want to give them some information on to what to expect when they um, go through this, uh, through the journey. It's, the job itself is not hard. If you can read numbers on the side of cars and know this thing looks different from this thing, it's easy to do. The hard part is the lifestyle. You know, being a young guy like me, young guy on the totem pole as far as seniority goes, there's times where 
I'm gone for six days out of the week, you know, working 12 hours off 10 hours and back on 12 hours. It's the lifestyle that's really going to be hard to adjust to, especially if you have close family, a wife, a girlfriend, kids. That's where it really gets challenging. I'm fortunate. I'm not tied down right now. I don't have any kids. So that really doesn't affect me. But even just trying to spend time with my family, you know, yeah, you get personal days, you get vacation days, but starting out young, you don't really get that many. So that's the toughest part. My biggest piece of advice to that is do the research. You know, talk to some people that are railroaders, get their piece. Me, if you're willing to make those sacrifices and deal with a lot of like the railroad politics, it's a good job. It's tough though being away from home that much. And right now where the railroads aren't in a great state with precision schedule railroading, they're doing a lot of not smart things right now, but I think that's gonna improve very shortly. Now you say that you went to, um, went to the, uh, start Abrams, went to Allentown, went to um, New Jersey mm -hmm. now, and also you say you took trains out to Altoona. Now let's talk about New Jersey, cause uh, I have not uh, been up there How's it like in the North Jersey area and part of the road? Because everywhere is different. That place is wild. And the reason why is, so you go up out of Allentown, you go up the Lehigh Line. And when you get to the place called Port Reading Junction, you have NS, CSX, Conrail, and New Jersey Transit all sharing the same two tracks. So it's wild. Just train after train after train. And we used to take trains to Oak Island. You'd set off in Oak Island and... You know, then take your train to Croxton. No gin needs to help you. No utilities to help you. What our 39G does here, we would do in Oak Island. Pull up, make a cut, double up three tracks, then double two up back to your train, and then walk all the way ahead to your train. Why, why is it not, if there's no um, access to a road or something to get gin up? No access to roads and just, it's, Oak Island is just not a very well laid out yard in my opinion. And I think that's not really the yard's fault. It's that the yard is so old. It's not meant to handle what the railroad is trying to make it handle. Thankfully, they still have a hump. But, you know, and that yard is on a big grade, too. It's a really big grade. Sometimes, you know, when you work, if you work out of a terminal that stays in the hotel, sometimes you'll take a train out to that hotel, stay in that hotel for like 20, 30 hours, and then have to take a train back. So sometimes, you know, you're away from home for days and days at a time. You know. At a lot of places, they're trying to cut out detention time, which don't ask me how that's legal, but they're getting away with it. But that can be tough, and especially when you get put in a company lodging. We call it the uh, MSI in Harrisburg. That place is like a prison. <laughs> <laughs> that place is like a prison. Well, you scared my audience, man. You scared my audience out here. But now, tell, them, tell them the real, though. Tell them the real. So now we'll, we'll go to the other side of the spectrum. Altoona. I think it was the best Western that they put us in. That hotel was awesome. Because it was like almost all railroaders had stayed in that hotel and they treated us, they really treated us really well. They had every Friday night, they had a home cooked meal that was free for the railroaders. Every holiday that you were out there, they cooked you this big meal. They gave you extra stuff. They treated the crews great. So it's not all bad.